I, I saw an article the other day that uh, the BBC want to make sure that one out of seven uh, headline TV presenters is gay or lesbian, which made me wonder why they want to reduce the number of gay people <laughs> on TV, to be honest, right? So th they, they've got this ad agenda, it seems like to me, in hiring, there's uh, positive discrimination uh, in favor of certain ethnic minorities. And that seems to me now in the world that we live in to be part of a particular mindset. Mm. That isn't just something that people do just because. That seems to be a reflection of a particular view. Do you think those things are connected? I do. And, uh, you know, the diversity uh, agenda, so-called, always amuses me in, 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 res in, in regard of the, to the BBC because, okay, I'd like to see diversity at the BBC. I really would. I think it would be a huge advance if we had proper diversity at the BBC, some political diversity, for instance, and maybe some diversity um, from the current uh, monoculture of social liberalism and a few social conservatives. That would be a kind of diversity, would it not? I mean, the fact is that simply having a color chart, you know, color code chart, and making sure that you've got every, you know, uh, the right proportion of everyone from, um, from black to albino and everything in between, um, guarantees nothing about the fairness of the, out, uh, of the output. All it means is that you have window dressed the screen um, in some way which is thought to reflect modern Britain without doing anything to seriously consider the content of what you're broadcasting, which is surely the important thing. You know, there is no diversity in the BBC in that, in, in that sense. They are all social liberals. As, I, you know, as we started talking about Andrew Neil, the great right winger, he's a social liberal. There are no social conservatives at the BBC. Robin wants his job back. <laughs> <laughs> How many albinos do you reckon there are at the BBC? I reckon there's somebody discussing it now <laughs> in a diversity office. We have no albinos. This needs to change. There's, they want that guy from the Da Vinci Code. Back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Uh. But, but, you see this a lot in comedy, and this is one of my bugbears. The majority of people in the referendum voted Brexit. There is only one pro-Brexit comedian on the BBC. It's Jeff Norcott. We love you, Jeff. You're brilliant. There should be other comedians. Yeah, of course. Why is there not any more? Well, um... <laughs> right wing is not funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. And as we all yeah. know, Brexit is not a right-wing issue, yeah. Constantine. We've had about 1,800 episodes I, I just had to say that because that's what people say, yeah, as, yeah, if, yeah. as if being on different sides of the political spectrum somehow affects how funny you are. Yeah. Is it, it's ridiculous. Well, Drew, I mean, uh, you know, they, uh, so why is that? Okay, well, it's a, it's a very interesting question. You know, I've often, I, I often wondered why it was that Jeremy Hardy, RIP, bless him, um, who I didn't find funny at all. I thought he was merely a, a, a propagandist. Um, you could not imagine um, someone, the obverse of Jeremy Hardy on the right, ever being given a platform by the BBC. It just wouldn't happen. When I was way, I mean, so um, this comes down to the idea of what is at work here? is a very pernicious and insidious way of um, patrolling the reservation, right? Within the reservation, certain things are allowed. We're all in the reservation, right? And the reservation is guarded by a liberal elite, which allows certain things to be said. But certain things are not allowed to be said. That's why I've got my, you know, my, my book, the, the Noble Liar, um, the idea behind the title of that book is this, that the BBC is not a malign organization uh, motivated to do us harm. On the contrary, it thinks of itself as being a very good organization motivated by the best of intentions and it wants to do us all good. And that's why it won't allow us to talk about certain things, <laughs> <laughs> which it doesn't feel a proper to talk about because they're nasty. So for instance, one might say, that um, the BBC has thrown its protective weight uh, behind the Muslim community in Britain. So anybody who attempts to uh, 
critique Islam um, is almost instantly labeled as an Islamophobe. And the effect of that is to crush all comment about Islam and to bully those people who have genuine concerns about Islam and, uh, 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 and, and the way that it operates. It's to bully them into silence. And that's why you, you don't hear those debates on the BBC. But there are lots of other things they won't talk about. You know, the limitations of feminism. Um, Rob's decided to lighten the mood yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with Islam and feminism. feminism yeah. well, let, let's keep going. Yeah, look, as soon as you hear said feminism, his Russian ears pricked up. Yes, we must talk about feminism. <laughs> Excellent. Tell me why women are inferior. <laughs> I'd just like to say that was racist and Francis is getting fired tomorrow. <laughs>